Welcome to the Fierce Life Podcast, powered by Fierce Firearms, home of the lightest, most deadly accurate rifles ever. Hey, Fierce Nation, here we are from uh, Redmond, Utah, podcast number 11. Got old uh, corn dog and little pudding here with me today. What's going on? What's happening, boys? It's raining, snowing outside. Yep. Oh, yeah. Trying to stay warm. You guys like that little music we got going on the yeah. old iPhone? Why are you playing Metallica? It's a special day. We got we have a special guest. Ooh. Who? Hmm. Our good friend James Hatfield, lead <laughs> singer of Metallica, is going to be calling in today. Awesome. We're going to see what Metallica's up to and pop a hat and talk hunting and all those good things. Yeah, so you got some good history with him. Yeah, we've had uh, we've had a lot of fun with with uh pop ahead he uh called in one day just out of the blue that's one of the things you never know here at fierce who's gonna call you called in and started ordering some rifles and uh just started talking i've been on a few hunts with him and he's come on our tv show we had a incredible hunt down at the muscular were you guys down there on that no nope. i was not nope ah you guys got left home you little buggers ben yeah, benny was there producer he was there yeah. It was sweet. I'm that, pretty sure God, that all happened back when we were at the old building, too. Yeah. When that, we were all, the old building is kind of like the sardine can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what we uh, call it, right? You know, the old building, there was, anyhow, yeah, we were squished in there. <laughs> we were squished. And now we've got the carbon shop over there, and they're even more squished in there. Yeah. So yep, sweat like, shop, as they call it. They call it the sweat shop now. But no, we've uh, had some great hunts. We went down to the Muscalera with with uh, James, and he's opening morning. Um, you guys have been down there and hunted with us down there. It uh, it can be a grind, and man, he mm-hmm. uh, we got him on a bull first morning, three mid three eighties, fantastic bull. Brought him in close. We'll, we'll probably talk to James a little bit about that when he calls in, and just see what they're up to. See what. He's been doing during this COVID layoff, and and it'll be interesting to hear. Yeah, you know if they're, I would guess a lot of these musicians are probably going stir crazy. They're probably mm-hmm. either just going nuts and hitting their hobbies hard, or else they're just getting creative as all get yeah. out and writing songs and maybe new albums coming out. Yeah, we'll have to hit them up about think that. New songs, new albums. I mean, we're hoping to get Cole Wetzel. He's an up and country, uh, up and coming, doing really well. Signed, uh, I think, with Columbia or someone. Yeah. Columbia, he's he's a customer of ours as, as well, and we'll hope to get him on a podcast. He's mm-hmm. on kind of the country slash rock genre, so uh, hear what he's up to. Gage has been out hunting with him. So, Court, yeah, we got Hepfield coming on today, and we've got uh, a great show coming up. But let's hear what you two have been up to. Um, Pudding, I mean, living the – what are you now? I don't even know your age. 22. You 22. just turned 22, bud. Yep. 22. Uh, what What's it like, the life of a 22-year-old? Well, you, like Courtney said, you, you go to bed tired and you wake up and hammer it again. It's <laughs> the same routine. It's, it ain't much different. Hammer it again. I, I'm sure you're talking about work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, single, 22, living at home, I might add, with mom and dad. Yeah, it'd yeah. be me in the basement. I mean, w- You've got two trucks. You've got a side by side. You've got about every gun you want. You hunt quite a bit. Um, I mean, this is a pretty good lifestyle. I wouldn't say it's too bad so far. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's too bad. I'd punch him right now. <laughs> oh man, I'd have killed for that lifestyle when I was your age. Jeez, uh, you I would say too much. I'm pretty sure Corn Dog rode that train too a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was single till I was 36. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you're right, Gage. I think you ro- rolled that train till why didn't you move out of home, Corn Snips, 34? I went, I mean, you got to think. I was out like in 2005. Like, I went and, you know, did different jobs. Oh, yeah, you left for a couple months. I left home. <laughs> I left home. Oh, you too. Oh, my gosh. I just look across at you two and just think what life could have been. Hey, just think Gage could be with you till he's 36. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
the <laughs> hell no. <laughs> oh, I will throw him out <laughs> by that point. I can't believe Mama Jan didn't just kick you to the curb, bud. Oh, you're telling me. You're telling me. So, so marriage life, I mean, how's it treating you? It's corn great. snips. I mean, I mean, there's stresses. You know, obviously, I'm starting to get a little gray in the in the beard. I mean, the what's hair. the stressful part? Wondering how many chickens, how many eggs are going to pop out that morning or what? God, it's going good right now. Although we did have a couple deaths. What? There was a couple deaths. Like chicken eggs broke? Or no, what kind of deaths no, we no, talking no. about? We lost a couple chickens. No. We lost... Well, yeah, when we I do. drive by at night, I see the little heater thing on. So, I mean, they didn't freeze to death. Why no, are you starting no, no. to interpret some cockfights or something over there across the street? No, there's no roosters, but the hens are fighting right now. So, let me get you up to date. <laughs> so, we had one die. All well, of a sudden. Ha- what happened at the coop? Well, there's just one died all of a sudden. One died all of a sudden, probably sudden egg death, or whatever. Egg gets caught. I don't know. It just died, so, right? I, whoa, 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 whoa. So, is that a thing? Sudden egg death? Yeah, Google it. <laughs> sudden egg death or sudden death. <laughs> so it gets caught like halfway out? They yep, die. sure does, and it dies. Oh, Do you at least get the egg? No. No. It's a loss both ways. Oh, so damn Trude it. calls me and says there's a dead one. What did we do wrong? I'm like, probably was nothing. That, was there tears? Yeah, I mean, there's some emotions there. Some sadness? From the other, yeah, the rest of the family members. I just, it's a chicken to me. I would have ate it, but <laughs> no, it's part of the family now. So that one died, and then we had another one die. What the heck? Two? Clove. Clove died. I, I drove home from work and just sitting out there, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I walked What's out Clove there. What's Clove doing? She's just sitting there. Wasn't moving. I'm like, well, she's still alive. She's been, I pick her up. She'd stand there. I'm like, oh boy. Clove's a girl. Clove's a girl. Okay. Sound like a boy name, but okay. Clove's yeah. a girl. Clove and ginger. And uh, <laughs> so wife comes out. What do we do? I don't know. Look it up. It's just old. She was in the lethargia stage. She's going to die over the night, so we just put her in the coop. <laughs> and she died that night, so I went out to go get her and uh, had a little Indy with me. That's your that's your baby It's a baby. Yeah, a little 18-month-old little girl. What did Indy say? Well... I went and got her out of the coop, picked her up, and kind of put the face towards Indy. She was like, whoa, like put her head back, like scared her a little bit, and threw Clove in the box. Oh, cool. Put her in the garage to bury her because we had to give her proper burial. Out you in had the to bury the chickens? Yeah. Like, uh, are we talking headstones? Mm. Like a stick with a cross? No, well, there might I be mean... pumpkins planted over it next this year, but. Oh, my goodness. So if you want to call pumpkins headstones. Just but good corn dog. This is, I, this has just gone to a whole other level. We've, I know. We're, t- we're just talking about living in your mom's basement, living the single life. Now, now I've got mean, the mini farm. Now you've, you're cooped up. Clove's dead. We're burying chickens. Indy goes to the door, opens it up, and just says, do die. Do die, die. She Dude, calls the chickens dues. Like cockadoodle do. Oh, oh! <laughs> well, she <laughs> nailed it. They're dead. She nailed it. So, but I mean, so do you replace them, or do you just kind of finally get out? You just got in the chicken business. Do you let them die and then just get out of the chicken business? Or? Mm, no, it doesn't work that way. I went and bought four more. <laughs> oh, shoot us! So now we're back up to eight. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, well, I haven't got any eggs yet. I don't well, know what's going on. They're starting there. to lay strong. They're finally starting to get settled down. There's a lot of hen fights going on. So that's my world, chicken world. Okay, well, we're up to speed on the coop. Um, how about you, Gage? Not just living the fierce life, but just come here every day. Yeah, nice. <laughs> How's that going? It's good. It's good. You're cranking out some guns, so we're just trying to hit numbers around here. What is the fierce life? Can you give me a little more descriptive definition of the fierce life? My fierce life is coming in and... Taking care of the customers, trying to make their fierce experience as good as I can. Okay. Well, that's a great answer. I mean, <laughs> come whoa. on, bud. That almost seemed like a slogan or that's something. Nice. You want like, to share that with the with other sales one. guys? That's right. I hope you better write that down. I can't even remember what bad. you just said, that's but it wasn't bad. Record. It's recorded, but we're good. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> Last podcast here at Fierce, we talked about a new product. Um, you remember that gauge? <clears throat> yes, sir. So what do you yes, think? Sir. What do you think of the new Reaper? What's been the feedback now that we've announced it? 
It's booming. I think it's going to be something that's going to take off, kind of be our new our new ultimate mountain gun. It's kind of what it's pushing to be, and from what I've heard from feedback from customers, it's kind of the way it's going. Absolutely. It's different. It's, you know, it's not your typical hunting rifle. What's right? different about it? Oh, my gosh, the stock collapses. It's a chassis gun, <laughs> it's baby. It's a chassis gun. You know, so it's not it's not your typical everyday, you know, think of fierce with, you know, your Monte Carlo type stock, um, you know, or LR. I mean, it's it's a chassis gun. It's different, and you know, pistol grip. It's it's dang cool. Dealers from the dealer side of things, they're on board. You know, they're they're ready to rock and roll. Now we just got to start delivering. Absolutely. I mean, I think this podcast probably should be titled the Badass Podcast right here with Hetfield coming on and then talking about the new Reaper, Mm -hmm. um, that thing, you know, you've got your traditional rifles and, and, um, I would say the new rival breaks tradition a little bit in the fact that it's got the long range stock. It's not your typical, a typical traditional hunting style stock, like more of our edge rifle is. That's a very traditional style stock. Our rival, we kind of went away from that a little bit, kind of had a crossover stock in the rival Mm -hmm. and now we've got the reaper which is a chassis gun and that's uh when we say chassis gun you can put different barreled actions on it and that's that's one of the reasons uh we came out with the rival people ask why did you come out with the rival rifle because it's a different style action than you know what's put us on the map in our edge rifle the Mm -hmm. edge rifle is more like a seiko 85 blueprint style action that of course we build custom high-end wire edm'd all those things and then uh the rivals more off the remington blueprint yep. but the big kicker besides you know most of the guys that copy the remington footprint on their actions they'll also do the big 90 degree bolt throw and that's the great thing about ours we got a 70 degree bolt throw yep. so the short bolt throw but then that allows us to get more flexible with that style of of action don't you think Corey? oh for sure i mean we were able to integrate that into you know, our chassis stock, you know, on the rival, it's got that vertical pistol grip, the integrated bipod rail, you know, all that good stuff, but you can do a lot more things with that rival as well. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So yeah, you know, it's got the folding stock, um, all carbon components in the back end of the folding stock, the uh, the forearm, the barrel. And once again, when, when you talk fierce, and and guys, we have to. I have to bring this up just because. I mean, not really want to bash our competitors, but we need to do some comparisons here. Just because we all hear it every day, guys say to us, "What is the difference between your gun and this gun?" Or the one we hear a lot is, "What is the difference between your gun and a Christian Arms gun?" And our guns start out at twenty two twenty three hundred bucks with half moa guarantee yep and then our ct rival now is around three grand half moa guarantee with the titanium action carbon barrel super light yep and what goes into that you know why we can do that is once again what goes into it the precision the materials um once again i mean our barrel cryogenically freeze them hand hand lapped um our carbon process is different on our carbon barrels. Our C3 carbon barrel is, is a different process. We're using higher modulus carbon fiber materials. And then you get to the action. It's more precise. Wire mm-hmm. EDM cut on our edge actions. I mean, all the way through to the Bix and Andy triggers on all models. Um, you know, that's a two to $500 trigger. I mean, so you look at the components that go into the guns. And then, I mean, our carbon fiber parts are a leg above the rest i Mm -hmm. mean honestly the way we manufacture our carbon stock i mean that new rival stock is uh, that's on a different level in my opinion sweet it is sweet it's lightweight the finish the structural strength yep uh we haven't seen a crack in one yet and i don't know that we will i don't know if we will either and so little things like that that the end user doesn't see you know that you just said the structural strength on how that's laid up i mean little things like that go a long ways Mm -hmm. And, and the end user doesn't necessarily see that, but we know that because of how we manufacture it and build it just for that reason. Absolutely. And, and in a previous podcast, we hit on that with Doug. Doug mm-hmm. was one of our special guests and just his, uh, 
you know, with a lot of his experience. And not all, Doug. I mean, some of our engineers and, yeah. and just some of our experience and background. We've got some fantastic techniques that help us make better parts, uh, manufacturing processes. And so, you know, that's the one thing we got to hammer home and let the listeners understand and realize when you compare, you need to compare apples to apples. And, and honestly, there is no one, guys, in our there's no one in our class for what we do. Yep. And so that's, I think, why we're growing so quick. And I think the word is getting out. We have tons of repeat customers. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think, Gage? You getting, seeing a lot of guys calling back? Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of guys are loving the new stuff for sure. All of the guys are. I have frequent customers that say I'm breaking their bank because every time we come out with something new, they got to have it. So <laughs> it's Fierce good. Nation. We love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, boys. Yeah, lots going on at Fierce Nation. A lot of new cool products. As we've discussed, we have uh, just, you know, our stuff. Obviously, we're biased to our stuff, but we really do strive to give our customer the best product for their money and, and better than the our competitors. And as we've talked about and explained, I believe we did that. I believe that's why we're growing and growing uh, pretty quick. I think we're giving the customer great value, huh, Courtney? Yeah, 100%. There's no way sands or butts about that. And that's what's exciting. That's what's exciting about coming to work every day and and um, just seeing that the employees believe in it, we believe in it, and um, it's good stuff. But let's get on to some more good stuff. Uh, James Hetfield, lead singer Metallica, uh, Papa Het, as his nickname, as he's nicknamed, uh, actually has that tattoo on his arm. Oh, Papa Het, love that guy. Super humble person but he's going to be calling in here he's a customer of fierce he's part of fierce nation and uh, a good friend hunted with him several times and look to do so more in the future but he's calling in matter of fact he's on the phone right now let's let's get him in right here answer that thing pick him up pick him up hey james yep you there can you hear me yes all right what are you up to buddy recording a bunch of noise out here um, <laughs> that people tend to like i guess <laughs> there you go. Uh, they yeah, see, they right. it's yeah they seem to like that that noise you're putting out brother i was gonna ask you what have you been up to during this big covid layoff it sounds like making music yeah definitely uh yeah you know it's either touring or writing so COVID chose for us. There wasn't a lot of touring going on, so <laughs> yeah, get to write music. Oh, that's fantastic! So for all of us fans, I mean, what can we expect? A new album, or just a few new songs, or what do you got up your sleeve? <laughs> well, hopefully a new album at some point. I guess whatever you call it these days, I guess it's an album, a CD, a group of songs, <laughs> a collection, whatever. Uh, you know, uh, a stream, uh, however you get your music now. But yeah, a bunch of songs. Yeah, we wrote, we wrote uh, quite a few songs. So um, we'll see how many uh, we like first, and then, and then we'll put them out. You know, we're pretty selfish that way. We like what we write as well. So. Oh, fantastic! So how does that process go? You write a few songs and then just kind of get together and. Take some parts out, put some stuff in. Do you get everyone's feedback nowadays when you do that, or how does that transpire? Yeah, this time was a little different, for sure. Um, uh, you know, uh, because of COVID, just sitting at home and uh, getting a little bit antsy um, <clears throat> and just feeling creative at the same time and wanting to get together. So I... Uh, I started doing a weekly Zoom with those guys just to check in, and then I just told them one time, hey, I'm going to write something. I'm just going to play something and send it to you guys. You do whatever you want with it, see what happens, and layer onto it. So that's how that um, we did a let's see, blackened uh, version, version of blackened 2020. Uh, I just basically played something. They hadn't heard it before. And uh, they played on it, uh, and then it kind of got layered together. And then we started uh, experimenting with writing on Zoom. Uh, Lars and I would get together, or Kirk and Lars, and, you know, get little bits of time here and there uh, writing. It was difficult because of the the delay uh, in the 
and the sound. So we couldn't actually play together, but we would play to a click track and uh, watch each other play. So we had our, you know, we had a, uh, our producer was running my computer while I was playing. Uh, he, he was running my computer from LA uh, and I'm in Vail. And then he, uh, uh, Lars had uh, an other assistant running his computer from LA. He's up here in San Francisco. And we were playing together, and it was pretty bizarre. We started writing. We got about, you know, I don't know, over over 10 songs going that way. And then finally got together. You know, uh, it, there's only so much you can do on Zoom, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Isn't that crazy, though, the technology where you can just get together and you do your thing, Lars does his, and everyone just kind of adds their specialty to it, and voila, huh? It's crazy. Well, that's that is uh, that's the magic of it all, and uh, you know we've been doing this for about a hundred years now, so we should have it together. <laughs> uh, probably feels like it, doesn't it? Oh, geez. So, so where's your studio, James? Where do you guys end up when you get do get together? It's uh yeah, uh, north of San Francisco. Gotcha. Um, so we've had this place, gosh, since two thousand, I think. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been our, you know, we call it HQ. It's been our, gosh, man cave, our gear storage, our, uh, idea place, our, uh, just dude hang. It's, it's a lot. Uh, and you know, the walls are filled with cool stuff. We've got tons of banners hanging from, from fans, uh, that have, you know, thrown them on stage, you know, flags. Uh, from all over the world. Um, that's kind of our, uh, it's our inspiration room when we go in there. It's also helps soundproof it a little bit. Oh, <laughs> all yeah. these flags hanging all <laughs> over the place. Uh, you know, we got pieces of stage set. We've got some memorabilia from other bands. Um, it's, uh, it's, a total, you know, it's a total man cave for Metallica. It very much is, very much. And during the COVID, uh, you guys had the little Metallica live stream, if you want to call it a concert or whatever, tuned into that. How was that, performing that without fans? I mean, is it is it hard to get amped up for? I mean, I'm sure there's a difference. Yeah, it's uh, – <laughs> there's a huge difference. I mean, we depend on a lot of the fan energy um, – uh, to to keep us going, it is you know cyclical in that way. We give them energy, they they give it back, and it just it goes back and forth uh, until we're all worn out, <laughs> which yeah. I love. Absolutely. Um, but this time it was all around. You know, it was an acoustic thing. Yeah. And it's you know for for a good cause. Yeah. Obviously, the you know all within my hands organization that uh, supports natural disasters. Uh, like the freeze in Texas or, uh, you know, earthquakes, uh, all things like that, uh, that are kind of something that we can certainly all as band members agree upon, yeah. uh, you know, whatever politics aside, we agree on, you know, people need help in crisis. Um, and also the blue collar workforce, which is the other part where we're helping out people who are, you know, not sure what they want to do in life, but uh, there is a place for them. You know, especially people that maybe a, a mom, you know, newly divorced single mother uh, doesn't know what to do. She's got to now raise money and she's going back to, uh, you know, like um, community college, but can't afford it. Uh, can't afford to, you know, not work and go to school. So we help out in all areas, you know, food, uh, transportation, uh, scholarships to schools, trade schools, stuff like that. So. We're super excited about that, uh, that organization. And we get lots of, lots of awesome feedback from people that is also very inspiring. So when we do this a benefit like that, we know we're doing something good. Uh, but we did have, uh, we had 300 fans per song cause they were up on the walls. You know? Oh, that's we right. These, yeah. These giants, uh, yeah. Giant, uh, whatever zoom wall and you know every song a whole new group of people would come up 
from all over the world. I mean, there were people in Japan, people in you know the Middle East, people all over the U.S., South America, Europe. It was spectacular. Oh man, uh, to see a lot of familiar faces too. You know. Yeah. So well, very well. inspiring. Well, that was great that you guys could do that and give the fans something during during that time. So, yeah, fantastic. And and then we, uh, it, you know, uh, I took the family and we went to the. I was texting you. We went to the local um, outdoor movie theater and watched Metallica, and that was that was pretty cool. I mean, you guys have been very creative during this time. So, hats off to you guys. Oh right, the drive-in, yep. the drive-in thing was a lot of lot of fun. That was probably a little harder to do because we were, you know, that's full full on kind of rock show. Us playing, you know, uh, pretty much a whole, whole set, but there was really nobody there. You know, we're looking out, we're watching our crew, you know, <laughs> texting each other or sitting on <laughs> Facebook, and we're out there jamming. Like, <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Give us some love. Yeah. Give us Give something. Us a little bit of love. I mean, clap, <laughs> do scream something. <laughs> Are we doing okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that no, was. I'm, we were grateful to be able to do that and put that into drive in theaters all across the country. I had no clue there were so many drive in theaters still. Uh, and I know there were a few makeshift ones that people just, you know, put up in fields uh, just for that event. But. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of cool uh, stuff. You know, over like two hundred fifty to three hundred across uh, North America. Yeah, yeah, and that was, and I hadn't been to to our uh, outdoor theater since I was a teenager, so that gave me good reason to go, and mm -hmm. and it reminded me that hey, those things are pretty cool, you know, especially when Metallica's on the screen jamming out, and people are got their lawn chairs out and, and jamming out too so it, it was cool so you've been obviously writing music getting ready for a new album i mean how <clears throat> so i what what's i know it's hard to say with the current environment but do you think you'll get out on tour this year i have no clue yeah. it's really not up to it's not up to me right it's, uh, it really is up to the safety of of everyone you know right uh, not just the fans, but the crew and us, and you know, um, not sure what that means in the future as far as uh, vaccines. Do you need to? Uh, gosh, I don't know. I'm I'm a little skeptical of getting the the vaccine, but uh, you know, it seems to be rolling out, and people are getting it. And I've got lots of friends that have done it, and you know, huh. just not not sh not totally sure about it, but. You know, I hope it doesn't come to a point where you have to have that stamp on, you know, COVID stamp on your passport or something where right. to, to go to go everywhere. But if it comes down to that, um, then I'll, I'll make a decision then. I mean, I've we got vaccinated to go to Africa. Um, so oh, nice. you know, it's not like I've never uh, been vaccinated before. Yeah, that's uh, right. But, you know, for our um but, you know, as a kid, I never got vaccinations because of our religion. So that that was the only time I got one when we were going on safari um, to Africa. Oh, yeah. You got to get your malaria shots and all hepatitis. your different. Yeah, hepatitis. Yeah, we get those when we go over. So, yeah, we're, you know, us hunters, we're, we're used to sacrificing, you know, getting these shots <laughs> to go to these exotic places. <laughs> Well, that is, shots to go take a shot that's right absolutely <laughs> well one last uh maybe just one other tidbit before we start talking hunting james i mean it, it's probably a stupid question but what's one of your favorite memories from all your tour days you know actually uh, i would have to say the the russian the russian show when we showed up in 91 after the coup uh, where the, the the country had opened up and was no longer communist, and uh, doing uh, that open air field, um, gosh, we played with like four other bands, uh, and basically um, for the first time, you know, it was a free concert out in an airfield, and they uh, they guesstimated a million or half a million. You know, you you could nobody knew really. Um, but just being able to play in a place that was just fresh and hadn't, you know, 
hadn't heard anything like that before, really. Oh, man. Uh, and watching people, uh, just watching people change as the music moved them. You know, they went, there were plenty of military people that just started taking their uniforms off and started rocking out. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a really, uh, really a freeing thing. Um, wow. So it was, it was awesome to, to witness that. So they're estimating there was over 500,000 people there and uh, plus, is that what they were guessing? Plus, yeah. I mean, it was Maybe a free a concert in the middle of an airfield. So wow. they, you know, they didn't keep count of people. But uh, as far as the eye could see, uh, past the horizon with, oh with my gosh. Little, he- little little Russian heads bobbing around. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Russian bobbleheads. Uh, that is amazing. That would be uh, an incredible experience. And, man, I'm, I'm sure there was uh, hundreds and thousands, if not a million new Metallica fans after that concert. So, wow, that would be incredible. That's a, that's a, that's a, I'm sure a great memory. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, mm-hmm. So what, a, what on the hunting side, obviously James, we I just gave the uh, listeners a little bit of feedback on, on, um, you know, getting them up to speed. You'd called in and, and bought a fierce, um, gosh, it's been five or six years ago. And, and then we've just talked here and there and went on a couple hunts together and and uh, I've had some great hunts. What, mm-hmm. <laughs> what, 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 what'd you like better, the elk hunt or the muscular or the deer hunt? The deer hunt. Sorry, you just cut out there. What was that? Uh, which of the two hunts that you and I went on did you did you like the best, the elk hunt or the deer hunt? Well, I loved them both. Uh, ah, good sure. answer. I mean, they were really, really completely different, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, one was a managed herd uh, on a res, and then you know you're sleeping in a hotel, and then the other one. Well, I guess I was sleeping at home for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> right yeah, out of bail, right really there. Really, basically down the road. Uh, yeah, in uh, Eagle County. Um, so, yeah, they were both great, and uh, uh, yeah, obviously chosen your. Uh, bang sticks for a reason because they're uh accurate and light and they look cool um and uh you know you continue to keep rolling out some cool stuff i see now so i'm excited to 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 get into some of the uh a little more precision round stuff which is very cool absolutely Um, yeah absolutely Uh, that new go ahead no i've been hunting uh, you know, uh, uh, on my own a little bit, you know, it's been a little tough, um, tough times. Uh, but, uh, me and some buddies got out to Idaho and, and knocked down a friggin' monster. I think it <sighs> scored 481 or something. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, insane elk. Uh, and then, uh, I actually just, this last weekend, I'm here in California doing the recording. I got a buddy who has a, a, a ranch up north in Mendocino County, and we just went hog hunting, and I I brought back some bacon for the studio here. <laughs> oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you tipped over a couple boars, huh, or pigs yeah, anyways? A, yeah, young. it was a young boar. He was about 150 pounds oh heck yeah really prime prime eating i uh basically quartered it you know we did the gutless method just took some straps out and uh actually there's a restaurant a local restaurant out there this guy a mexican guy who owns it kept kind of i thought he was talking tough you know oh you guys don't keep the head of the hog you know that's the best part and uh you know so he uh uh we said no we don't but if you want the head we'll bring you one and he's like oh yeah 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 so this last time went up there and basically put you know we 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 got what we wanted out of it and i um i put the head in a bucket and brought it to the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> and uh it walked back there and said hey we got a we got a you know we got a, a gift for jose like oh, okay just leave it here it's like no he's got to come out and get yeah, it, and bring no. it into the restaurant yeah yeah 
So he grabbed it and brought it back into the kitchen. He was super stoked. I guess they love the cheeks and the tongue and the brain, the, the ears, everything. Oh, my um, goodness. Geez. But, yeah. They love I it smoked, all. Uh, I smoked one of the uh, shoulders for about eight hours and brought it into the studio, and we had pulled pork sandwiches. It was awesome. Nothing oh, better yeah. than organic, you know, uh, uh, harvested meat, man. How do the other boys from the band feel about it? I mean, obviously, if they're partaking in your your harvest, they're they're uh, not against it by any means. No, they're certainly not against uh, whatever you know whatever we do for our own our own hobbies, our own beliefs, our own joys. Uh, they're you know we're all super supportive of each other. Um, you know, there's a couple a couple of the guys choose not to eat meat. And that's their choice, right? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, there's one other guy and then plenty of other workers here at the studio. Um, they enjoy it, too. And I'll, you know, out of my ranch here, I'll just go fishing in the morning, bring in a trout um, to the studio and have them cook it up. And <laughs> you got, you got, it was nothing fresher than that. It's pretty no. awful. So, yeah, we're all, uh, we're all very respectful of each other's beliefs and whatever, you know. Keeps, uh, keeps us ticking, man. Absolutely. I was reading, James, uh, Cliff, he was a big hunter and shooter as well, wasn't he? Did you guys ever get out and hunt or do any of the outdoor stuff together? Not so much hunting. Oh, I guess there was hunting. Uh, we would go out uh, up north here in California. Mostly it was um, uh, for quail. Oh, yeah. Um, really good but, eating. Yeah, quail, um, but mostly it was just shooting. We'd just go out and uh, have fun, you know, making noise. Yeah. Uh, making noise, shooting guns, and, you know, drink, uh, having a few beverages back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, luckily, no one got one in the foot or anything like that, so that's right. all good. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, and then, uh, so you did a f little bit of pheasant hunting as well, I know, because we sent you over a shotgun. Yeah, I love that thing. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah. Were you happy with the 16-gauge? I kind of picked one out for you, and I was like, man, I love the 16-gauge. I'll send, see if Hetfield likes the 16-gauge. Yeah, you bet. I was I was knocking them down. Everyone was claiming they were theirs. I got I, I got a buddy, that just to, you know, it's like I I got that one. Like, Dude, you didn't even fire. He, he's sitting in the he's sitting in the truck. Are you shot him from the truck? I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. you're a hundred so, yards away. You, know, you got him from those, the truck. <laughs> yeah, one of those guys. Oh, yeah. I, I got it. I got yeah. it. Oh yeah. Um, but no, that sixteen is is sweet. I guess sweet sixteen, right? Um, sweet, yeah, uh, yeah, knocking them down. Yeah, there's pheasant, chucker, and uh, I guess a couple of. Gosh, I don't know what else was out there. Um, grouse, possibly they had. I don't know, but yeah, we were we were knocking them down. Uh, oh, yeah, sweet. I love that gun. Um, well, here uh, at here at Fierce, we're we've got a we've got a range right out our back door here at the office, out to a mile. And we're just starting to build a, a pheasant place, a lodge with uh, where we'll be doing some chucker and pheasant hunting. So we'll have to get you out here next year and just have a day or two of shooting them and just having fun shooting birds and long range with our rifles and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, yeah, bird, bird uh, birding is fun, um, but also hitting a a piece of steel at a thousand yards is pretty fun too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are you still shooting out at out at your ranch there? You still got your long range oh, yeah. course set up? Yeah, I've, I've I'm kind of maxed out at 800 yards, but um, yeah, I love it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's fun to do. Get my buddies up there, and um, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know the round that they're coming out with and the precision and all of the stuff, you know, it keeps improving. It's pretty spectacular. So it is. Yeah. It's amazing. Isn't it? All the new rounds, all the new technology, all the new cool stuff like fierce is putting out that new reaper. I sent you photos of, we'll have to get you one of those for sure. Um, back to the ranch. You, I, I went up and visited you there at the ranch and kind of toured the ranch and 
there was that black bear hanging around, but that's been a couple years ago. Did he ever show up? Did you take care of that problem? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's a uh... problem. Uh, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, you know, uh, it's, you know, I've been. Uh, there's been a lot of construction going on up there, so uh, there have been. You know, there's a, there's a couple of really nice mule deer uh, bucks that I've seen, but. You know, the moose and the bear, I haven't seen much of them. Uh, no cats or, you know, lions up there uh, on the cams quite yet. There's just been too much action yeah. uh, with the construction. Yeah. Uh, but they're pretty much done now, and we're going to set up some uh, some alfalfa out there and hopefully draw in some, uh, draw in some uh, big game. And Absolutely. We'll see. we'll see what's up. Um, but, yeah, we've seen moose. We've seen bear. We've seen uh you know coyotes bobcats all the, the regular stuff and uh some pretty good sized deer and elk yeah that's that you're in a nice part of the world over there for sure in colorado some beautiful country and yeah that place be great to see that place in a few years to see what uh what you've did with it so that'll be exciting yeah i'm super blessed uh as you are you know having that all the, the compound there and you know uh you know, everywhere is God's country if you if you think about it. But I'm really excited about Colorado. I love it out there. You know, we've got big plains, we've got uh, big mountains. Kind of got it all there. Uh, really blessed. Absolutely. Yep. Great country. So, what is on? Uh, I'm. You know, obviously this fall we're hoping to get you up to Canada with us to shoot some big whitetail. But what? What's on your bucket list? You got have a bucket list of animals or hunts, adventures, hunting adventures you want to do. Uh, do you got a, what's on your bucket list for hunting? I uh, there's uh, I got I got a couple of buddies that are just obsessed with moose and you know they they we got to get to Alaska, got to do or the Yukon or some get a big moose and. I don't know what it is about that. I'm not that excited about moose, you know. I, you know, deer and elk. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited mostly for elk because they taste really good, and and hogs. Uh, I've never had moose before. I had whitetail for the first time when I was in Wisconsin doing the tree stand, which I hadn't never done before, and it was. It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Standing in the tree for uh, four hours in the morning and four hours at night, uh, you kind of get a little. Uh, I got I got a little lost in my head a few times. Oh like, yeah. I hope I don't fall asleep here, or mm-hmm. you know, you just. And then all of a sudden, a, a doe will walk by, and it'll get you all amped up again. Um, yeah, warm you up uh, for about twenty seconds, and then back to shivering exactly. again. <laughs> Yeah, well, they're making some pretty cool stuff now too. With you know, heated vests and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. So that, you're probably little, like me, you helpful. know, us Western boys. The first whitetail hunt I went on, Swarovski Optics took me on up in uh, Canada, and uh, I'd never been on a tree stand hunt before. So, you know, us Western guys, we're used to spotting stock and getting out. Even when it's cold, you're not cold because you're moving and hiking and and uh you know stay warm just from keeping your heart rate up and different things like that so i go up to canada it was around thanksgiving time and um, i've got my kuyu gear and you know a couple pair of long underwear some warm boots and all that stuff and we get out there and and they stick me up in a uh, they call it a tripod stand so it's up in the air and a tree stand and all they've got is a tarp wrapped around this tree stand and the wind is blowing, and I swear it was 20 below. And I made it about 45 minutes. And I've, you know, you see in the cartoons, and you and you see people's teeth chattering. Well, I experienced <laughs> my teeth chattering, literally, uncontrollably. I was so cold, so I had to get down and just sit and walk circles down at the base of the tree stand to try and stay warm. I I was not prepared, so. Same thing too. You're right. just sitting up, sitting there all. They left us out there all day, and it's just like, man, what do you, what do you do with yourself and your thoughts for all day in that freezing cold weather? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you could probably write a song about that, James. 
yeah. We already did. It's called Trapped Under Ice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I I feel you, brother. I feel you. Because, uh, yeah, we're not used to that just sitting there. Um, no. Um, you know, and, and you're all strapped in and, you know, you're you're bundled up and you can't really move. You got a little, you know, you're, oh, yeah. you're basically sitting on a toilet up there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. You're not. I would stand up and kind of move around and get back down. and uh, But, you know, there was enough, like, I guess, squirrels or woodpeckers or something to at least, uh, you know, kind of uh, make sure, you know, you're not out there alone. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, then, then something would walk by and get excited and or something's just out of range. And But, you know, it's a different kind of hunting, but I respect it. I yeah. respect those people up there. We were in Wisconsin, and I tell you, they are obsessed. Uh, and all mm-hmm. they talk about is farming mm-hmm. and hunting, and and they, they farm know all the deer. I think a lot of those guys, you know, you think they farm to live. They farm to hunt. A lot of those guys, You're right? <laughs> they farm to hunt. Yep. And yeah. everyone knows the deer that's around there. You know, they're all they're all pretty much called for you know yeah oh that's a three-year-old you know old drop time you know give him another year and then, <laughs> yeah. you know a buddy of mine when we were up there we were hunting and he he took this one uh and you know uh he called all the the, the local farms around him just saying that you know hey drop time is dead it's like oh wow awesome <laughs> you know shake that guy's hand you know yeah. everyone is just super excited and proud for everyone you know uh harvesting you know what they've been watching grow up for like four years you know yeah absolutely yeah, yeah that's 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 cool stuff did you get one on that hunt i did not uh um, I, I thought i was pretty good at a bow but man <laughs> when you're i was actually in a, a ground blind and, you know, when you're shooting out of a, whatever, a, a, a one foot slot mm-hmm. and I was super excited and it was a lot closer than I thought. And, you know, you're shooting down a bit. I, I shot high on it and it, and it stuck a back strap and he bled for a little bit, but then ran off. And, um, uh, you know, we followed the trail for a while, found the arrow and there was some meat on it. So it's like, all right, uh, yeah. he's still, he's still, like, we've seen him on well, of course, they've seen him on the game cam since. Oh yeah, the little uh, little red spot on his back. So they, he's he's, he's, <laughs> he's nicknamed Papa Head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, we'll see if he's he was a little, you know he was only probably a three year old anyway. Um, but yeah, they. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get up there with you yeah. and uh, to see some of those monsters up there. Those are yeah crazy looking beast yeah we got a buddy um, up there todd a true north trophy hunts man he's got some giant deer and and courtney here is with us on the podcast you've killed a monster up there on courtney oh yeah hanging out of the blind <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that but it was the last day last minute and i wasn't about ready to let that deer walk by no so you kind of went western hung out the blind you and... didn't believe me i said there he was and you were half asleep on the other side in the blind but I went all ass hanging out and everything. I don't know how you got it on film, but you did. <laughs> we got it, yeah. So that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Trying to put together uh, another one of our uh, customers and friends, trying to get old uh, Barry Bonds up there on the hunt. I think we can make that happen. That'll be that'll be the San Francisco boys. That would be quite the hunt, huh? <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. So. Right. Yeah, he's Yeah. He's a big hunter. Oh, nice and white tail. Nice yeah. white tail is on my bucket list, as you were asking. Sorry to interrupt. No um, problem. And and then uh, a you know big Mexican muley would be quite awesome as well. Oh, we got to get you yeah. back down there, man. Me and Gage, we talked about that last podcast. We just little Gage here, my son. He's he just got another set of horns back from Mexico. I believe he mm-hmm. uh, he got all of his mule deer hunting done in in one season that he generally gets done in ten. So that's how Mexico can be. <laughs> uh, you know the the Mexican laws down there. You can shoot as many deer as you can pay for, <laughs> or know someone. <laughs> that sounds, yeah, that's 
Sounds like how they do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we had we had a blast down there. So well, shoot, I know you've probably got stuff to run off and do, pop ahead. But we really appreciate you joining us, taking some time out of your day, and talking to Fierce Nation and and. Uh, oh, I love taking the time. I love you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, you know, love love what you guys do and what you do for uh, the hunting world. And, uh, you know, with the long range school and all that stuff. And, you know, I really appreciate you setting up hunts with me. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously what you do, you guys, uh, got a precision product and, uh, you know, very grateful for that. Well, we really appreciate that. And then, yeah. And thanks for doing what you do. We're all very looking forward to, uh, what's coming down the pipe with this new album and, uh, just keep enjoying what you've produced in the past. It's uh, it's magical, great stuff, and you guys are, are legends, so thank you. Thanks for those words, man. And we are certainly blessed to still be walking around this earth and doing what we love doing, man. All right, brother. Take care. All right. All right. Talk to you soon, boys. We'll see you. Yeah. See you later. Pop a head out. Pop a head out. What do you think of that, Gagey? Talking to one of the greatest rock stars of all times, bud. Oh, yeah. He's he's a cool dude. I still remember meeting him up at the Salt Lake show. He's a stud. Yeah. Brings out his Kuyu guitar and shreds it. It's good. He's he's down-to-earth guy. That's for sure. That's, that's the one thing. One of the greatest uh, rock stars of really all times. Uh, legend and, and just... Uh, a really smart guy very grounded mm -hmm. very uh laid back um he's got a pretty good vocabulary he was using some big words yeah very <laughs> educated right going to <laughs> <He> really is <laughs> <laughs> well mm -hmm. you think about it the artistic side oh. i mean just writing guys. songs and the mm -hmm. words and i mean very intellectual very yep. smart yep you nailed it he's a very very intellectual person and uh obviously gives a lot of thought to what he does mm -hmm. i think even hunting you know yep. even the hunting side of it and and it's good to see that you know he's excited about it loves to hunt loves to get in the outdoors here's and, probably like the biggest thing like that i just got like i mean like you said he's the biggest rock star right i mean here's papa hat james hatfield but then yet like you said, he's grounded he's humble he's grateful you know for everyone else out there like you see yep. that when you see him just jamming out on stage, you'd never think that. Yeah. But then you get him here, and it's like, holy crap! Like he's a super down to earth, great guy. Yep. Yep. And uh, you know, kind of goes back to that old saying. You know, we all put our pants on one leg at a time, and mm -hmm. and when you when you meet these big superstars, and and you know, it's kind of there's a lot of, and I've been fortunate enough to meet some really really cool guys and some big stars over the years and that's what you come to find out they mm -hmm. put their pants on one leg at a time just like you do and 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 for the most part are, are just good dudes yeah down to earth uh you know the ones i've met i'm sure there's some that aren't but yeah. uh we've been fortunate and and james hatfield pop ahead is just world class yeah. just a great guy great guy and and obviously uh, you know i'm sure the rest of the band members as well and that to think of them guy them doing this since i think they were 17 18 yeah, how lars long? put out that ad in a in the newspaper hey looking to start a band they were young and to be at still at it and still going yeah crazy and mm -hmm. still putting out new albums that would be difficult to try and uh since what the early 1980s yeah I think 83, 84, 83, 84. yeah, yeah, they, uh, and then just blew up with, you know, some of those n new albums and, and the, the black album and man, just, but I mean, just listening to them, I think that, you know, as band member, I mean, you don't hear of that, right? Like bands staying together that long, no, you know, but, but just with him on the phone, like the respect that they have for each other. You know, whether it's their religious views or whatever it may be, but they respect each other. Right. They don't get offended. They respect each other, support each other, and they play music. How about playing in front of nearly a million people? 
million plus. That they is don't really know. Psycho. He just said it was at least a million people. Can you imagine that? Just looking out and seeing seas of people just screaming and going nuts. Russian bobbleheads. <laughs> Russian bobbleheads. The Russian bobbleheads, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite the experience. I'm, oh, and an airfield. I mean, you went to it when it was in the stadium. Yeah. You know, and how many people were there? Uh, 80,000 plus, I think they said. Just mm. nuts. Multiply that by huh. more than 10. A lot of people. A lot of screaming fans. I'll bet there was some crazy stuff going on. Oh, <laughs> I mean, boy. like you said, you know, police or whatever, taking their uniforms off and just jamming to the music. You know, freedom. Yeah. Man, you know, so that is that is cool stuff. Um, yeah, so we're fortunate enough to – to know Papa Head and have him as a customer and be able to hunt with him once in a while. And as you heard, just a great guy and loves hunting, loves, mm. loves his sport, loves to just go. You heard him. I mean, and that's what's cool. Just loves to go out and shoot and bang steel. And that's why this long range stuff is, you know, in, in some ways it kind of becomes therapy. I mean, just to be able to sit down there with your, your rifle, your weapon and, and be able to shoot those distances. Mm hmm and do it successfully and i've been out to his ranch and he's got a little long range course set up out to 800 yards just out through the sagebrush and goes out there and shoots and and uh just loves the outdoors and loves to do what we all love to do and that's that's cool well what else boys i don't know i think uh geez how do you how do you say a whole lot after that huh you don't i'm ready for a nap <laughs> <laughs> we just wore a little corn dog right out he needs a nap <laughs> <laughs> a nap, some lunch, and a nap. I'm gonna go listen to some Metallica and take a nap. Absolutely. Well, Fierce Nation, we hope you enjoyed that. I'm um, talking to James Hetfield from Lead Singer Metallica, and just uh, you know, hearing his perspective on a few things, and and to you know, enjoy the fact that he enjoys and loves the outdoors and hunting and and fishing and those things. So um, well, that's it for today, man. Podcast number eleven fierce nation we are out make sure you tune in next time i'm not sure what we're going to bring you but hopefully it'll be entertaining talk to you soon signing out Peace. thank you for spending your time with the fierce nation for more info on our rifles products or events check out our website www.fiercearms.com or send us a message through any of our social media channels